I did it again, yo. I did it again. I messed up. Now, we were having a conversation a couple days ago talking about how most receivers that are drafted by the Baltimore Ravens, they do not make it out alive. Uh, we talked about how hard it is for them not only to get a second contract from the Baltimore Ravens, because that's something that just really never happens, but for them to get an outside contract from another team after the Ravens. Uh, and we talked about some different receivers that the Ravens have drafted, uh, but we missed out on a few that have not only gotten second contracts from the Ravens, but also got deals elsewhere. Um, now, we spoke about Torrey Smith in length. We know he was one of the ones because he signed with the, the 49ers, he signed with the Panthers, and he signed with the Eagles as well. Um, and then my guy JT brought to my attention Chris Moore. Chris Moore actually got a second contract from the Baltimore Ravens. He signed a one-year deal with them. And then the following year, which was last season, he got signed by the Houston Texans. So I was thinking, okay, that's the only ones that really made it out alive. That's it. And I know some people brought up in the comment section, oh, what about Darren Waller? Well, Darren Waller, he was drafted as a wide receiver, but the Ravens transitioned him to tight end, and then he went on to the Raiders to become one of the best tight ends in the game. Crazy story. You should hear it sometime. But anyway, there was another guy that I missed. I completely missed. And when I heard it, I was like, wow. Shout out to my guy, Bio Larson, because he was in the comment section, and he kindly corrected me. He said, but wait, but wait. There's more. 1999, fourth round draft pick, wide receiver, Brandon Stokely. Drafted by the Baltimore Ravens, Super Bowl champion with the Baltimore Ravens. And guess what? <laughs> this guy, he not only got his deal from the Baltimore Ravens, his initial rookie deal, of course, but then he went on to go play with the Colts. And he was like, you know what? Winning the Super Bowl was so nice that I want to do it twice. So he went and won a Super Bowl with the Colts. And then he also played for the Broncos, the Seahawks, the Giants, the Broncos again. But then it all came back around. All came back around because in 2013, which ended up being his last season, he played for the Ravens again. And it, it, it wasn't the prettiest. It wasn't the prettiest because that's when we had Dallas Clark too. And it, ooh, that, that season was just, that season was rough. And that season was a wake-up call because – it humbled me as a Raven fan. It humbled me big time because as, as y'all remember, the previous five years, we were coming off of a bunch of highs. AFC championship, AFC championship, AFC championship, division around Super Bowl. It's like, whoa, let's go. Oh, yeah, we on top, baby. But then, yeah, 2013 was at eight and it is ugly. Um, but yeah, I was like, let's, I, I, I couldn't believe that. I'm like, man, Brandon Stokely. So he's another one. But anyway, just had to. Get that taken care of. Now, some other things that we need to talk about today. Man, it, the NFL has been getting a little busy. Uh, first, a, a quick little channel update for y'all. Um, I meant to do it last week, but I, I just haven't been able to do it. Uh, we are pro This week, you're probably going to be seeing two-a-days. Two-a-days, one video in the morning, one video at night. Um, and if you can't watch the one at night, you, I mean, you could always watch the following morning, whenever, really. But one video in the morning and one video at night because we are so far back when it comes to questions from subscribers. I want to try. I'm not going to make any promises. I'm not going to stress myself out trying to get caught up. But I'm going to try to get caught up with all the questions from subs that we have. So expect to see two a days probably starting today. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, another thing. As far as some little things going on in the NFL, you know, you ever played when you, when you was a kid? Even some, I mean, some of y'all adults might play it now, too. You ever played tag? You ever played tag? Tag was a fun game. Like, oh, tag, you're it. But now the NFL, they've been playing tag. And they've been playing franchise tag. And the deadline to apply the franchise tag to somebody is tomorrow. It's Tuesday by 4 p.m. NFL, whenever they, it comes to their deadlines, it's always 4 p.m. 4 p.m. So... A team that so many people told me when they initially traded for him, a lot of people told me, oh, man, they, they traded for him. That's going to be a one-year rental. These guys, they, they spent this first-round pick, and he's going to be a one-year rental. They ain't got no money. They're not going to be able to tag him. It's going to cost too much. They ain't going to be able to sign him. It's going to cost too much because of that salary cap. These dudes ain't going to have no bread. And the team I'm talking about is the Kansas City Chiefs. And, of course, remember when they acquired Orlando Brown Jr. from the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, man, I remember that, and I was just thinking, wow. 
I guess that was the only team that was really biting with a first round pick. Even though Ravens had to give up a second round pick in order to get that first round pick, but it's okay. You got Rashad Bateman and Adafi away. Well, Adafi away from that pick, but it's so it, it's, it looks like it's gonna work out. But a lot of people are like, "Oh man, the Chiefs, they they ain't, they ain't got no money." Orlando Brown Jr. gonna be there for one year and that's it. Nope. Chiefs were like, oh, you think we traded a first round pick for nothing? And I told people that back then. I'm like, why would they give up a first round pick for a one year rental? The, the Chiefs are not the Rams, even though, I mean, both teams, they used to go into the Super Bowls over and over and over. So something they doing is working. But anyway, another conversation. Um, but they, they franchise tag Orlando Brown Jr. So he is not going anywhere. And if they can't come to a contract extension, I think the deadline to come to a contract extension is in May for people under the franchise tag, I believe. I got to double check that, though. Um, but if they can't come to a, a contract extension by then, then he will just play this year under the franchise tag. Now, if you know anything about the Chiefs, if you've been just watching the Chiefs, studying the Chiefs, or even just listen to the Chiefs, for the, especially over the past couple of years, they're going to get a deal done. You know they're going to get a deal done. They're not, they're not going to want him to play under that franchise tag. They're, they're not. Uh, and Orlando Brown Jr., I think I heard a crazy stat like a couple months ago. He's the only uh, offensive lineman to go to three straight Pro Bowls over the past three years. I was like, oh, okay. All right, OBJ. Do your thing, baby. So shout out to Orlando Brown Jr. I'm glad things are going well for him. Now, to get even closer to the Baltimore Ravens. Now, this franchise tag kind of shocked me uh, because this was a, a Ravens AFC North rival in the Cleveland Browns. Um, I remember the game, I think it was the game in Baltimore where they said it was a touchdown catch, but it didn't look like he caught that ball. The Browns, they tagged David Njoku. And when I saw that, I was like, what? They they tagged David Njoku? What? Because I have been hearing all these reports this offseason, oh, the Browns, they really want to keep David Njoku. They really love David Njoku. They want to hang on to David Njoku. And those are definitely different from things that we have been hearing about David Njoku in years past. Because you would always hear, oh, David Njoku, he's trade bait. Oh, David Njoku, the Browns, they shopping him. Then you hear, oh, David Njoku, oh, he, he had said something about possibly being traded. And then he took it down. And then he's like, oh, I love Cleveland. Da, 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 da. This was like last year. But to see them actually put that franchise tag on, I was like, oh, okay. Now, on the flip side, what does this mean for Austin Hooper? What does it mean for him? I'm not sure if he still has that title, but when the Browns initially signed him, he became the highest paid tight end in the league. Now, I um, obviously nothing personal against him or anything, but I just always felt like, because I know he came from the Falcons, I just always felt like he was overrated. I was just, when, when the Browns, when they signed him, I was like, okay, cool, they signed him Austin Hoop, but for the deal that they signed him for, I was just thinking like, how, like why? Is this market going to be that crazy? I just I just never felt like he was just like like that. No, he can catch it, but I just, I don't know, man. Maybe it's just me, but I just never felt like he was like like that. Um, but, hey, I ain't mad at nobody getting their bread, man. So, shout out to him. But now, what does this mean for him? Like, because you're already paying him a lot of money, and now you're tagging David Njoku. So, what does that say for David Njoku? Are you going to tag him and try to sign him to a contract extension? Are you going to try to do like a sort of like a Patriots thing with, with Gronk and uh, Aaron Hernandez, how they had that little dual threat at tight end? But that's, that's a lot of money commanded to the tight ends now. So you would have to think, and they still got the guy uh, who went to um, FAU. I always forget his name. But... You, you got to feel like they're going to move on from Austin Hooper. But that, that's just me, my own personal thoughts. I ain't hear anything about anything from it. But to me, it feels like, all right, well, they're tagging David Njoku. So they, they want to really keep him around. Because if they really felt like I, it wasn't worth it to keep David Njoku, then they'd be like, okay, bye. See ya. What would be the point of tagging him? Because, again, that franchise tag... That all that cap is allocated to that one player. It's all guaranteed too. It's all guaranteed. It's not like with some deals with how you can hear they, they their salary can be like five mil a year, but their cap hit ends up being like two point five mil. No, no, no. With the franchise tag, it's all of it. So if the franchise tag, just to use this as an example, if the franchise tag is for ten mil, then they they take up ten mil in cap space. 
franchise tag is for 20 mil. They take up 20 mil in cap space and so on and so forth. So we'll see what happens on the other side of the AFC North uh, with those Cleveland Browns. Now, something else. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of Ravens fans heard this already and they were like, oh, yeah, come on back, baby. Do a Brandon Stokely. It's Darius Smith, Aaron Wilson, who used to work for the Baltimore Sun. So he's familiar with the Ravens stuff. But anyway, uh, he said that it's expected that the Packers are going to release one Zadarius Smith. So, I mean, that is no surprise. That's something that a lot of us have been expecting to happen. Uh, but it could happen like any day now. Because I think, I believe next week, that uh, that legal tampering period starts. They need to just get rid of that. Just, just start free agency on Monday. I mean, it's basically started, but yeah. So, yeah. So it's 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 getting it's getting spicy around the league. It's getting hot. It's getting really hot. Um, and that that time is ticking. So Ravens now we know they they ain't gonna use a franchise tag on nobody. Um, but now would be the time over this next week. Uh, would be the time when you could possibly see them release a player. Them possibly. Give a player a contract extension. Uh, them possibly, I mean, we haven't heard about any trades from anybody, but that could happen like any day now. And then, of course, with the new league year starting like next week, oh, yeah, it's, it's on the way very, very soon. So keep your eyes open, your ears open, your notifications turned on. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, and again, thank you all so much for rocking with us. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for watching. Uh, and again, the tour days, they're going to start two days. So look out for an episode of Question from Subscribers later on tonight. I love y'all. Team Keep It Clean. That's a lot of. We out, man.